Hey guys, behind me is a BMW E36 convertible with a broken roof. Uh, in today's video, guys, what we're gonna do is we're gonna completely rewire the roof bypassing the computer. I am gonna show you how to hook up the roof yourself, fix it once and for all, guys. Um, let's get started right away. Okay, guys, so these cars came out with two different style roofs. Uh, one roof is fully automatic and one roof is partially automatic. What that means is this opens up, that's one motor, right? Then the roof comes out, that's the second motor. And some of them have a handle here and you close this part of the roof manually. And some of them also have a motor there. So some have one, two, three motors and some have two motors. In this video, I'm gonna cover both styles, but the one we're specifically working on here has three motors, guys. Okay, so I mean, I would hate to take you away from this video, but I have another video where I show you how to open and how to close a broken roof on one of these. You really should watch it. I don't feel like recording the same stuff twice. That video covers Basically that handle there, how you pull that and that pops the motors out. So it frees this and it frees the roof. And I show you how to close this front part in that video. So in the description of this video, there would be a link to that video. If you haven't watched it, just quickly check it out so you understand what's going on here. Okay, so in our case, we're just gonna get into this right away. Okay, so yes, you can buy computers and try swapping out your computer and check all your micro switches and all this stuff. So I have tried everything to get this roof working and I've only got it to close once and then it got all messed up. I'm done trying. I wanna get this car on the road. Uh, we're just gonna do it the simple, quick, very inexpensive way. Okay, so the first thing you wanna do is pop your trunk here. And inside of your trunk, right here, there is two motors. See, uh, there's one motor here, it's popped in now. And there's another motor right here, which is also popped in. So what you're gonna have to do is, yeah, you're gonna have to cut some wires, guys. So all these little wires coming out of it, I cut, right, all the little skinny ones. And these are your two main wires for that motor. One is gray and red, one is gray and black. So these two wires will control basically this opening and closing. I will get to how to hook that up in a minute. And here is your second motor right here. And these two wires, so they come out uh, red and green, then they go through this and they become uh, blue with a red line and blue with a green line. See, those were hooked up there. So I just cut that. You're gonna put electrical tape on this. You're not gonna use these anymore. You're gonna put electrical tape on these ones. You're not gonna use these anymore for now. Um, you're gonna need these two and these two that go back into this motor. Okay, so that second motor that I just showed you controls the actual roof, like the roof that comes out. So that's what that second motor controls. And then there is a third motor inside of the actual roof that controls this. Pretty straightforward, right guys? Okay guys, now I'm gonna show you how these motors work. It's honestly pretty straightforward. Okay, so you're gonna need a wire like this just so you can get it out of the trunk. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna go in here and these two wires that go directly into that motor, you're just gonna hook these two up to it for now. Like I'm just showing you how this works. So this one will get hooked up there. That one will get hooked up there, right up to this motor. And I'll have it running out the trunk. Uh, just so you can understand how this works. Let me just quickly hook that up. Okay, so I hooked it up. See, just like this. One's hooked up to one, one's hooked up to the other. I got it running out of the trunk. So now you can close your trunk. And you got these two wires right here hooked up directly to your motor. Okay, so now this is a 12 volt battery out of one of my scooters. It's the same amount of voltage as a car battery. Yes, it's smaller looking, but it's still 12 volts. It's the exact same thing. 
So the way these 12 volt motors work on cars is if you hook it up in one direction, here, let me show you. See, I got my two wires that hook up directly to the motor. There's my positive and there is my negative. So if you hook these up like this, positive, negative, and yes, on a car battery, you can touch these. You're not gonna get electrocuted. Uh, it's only 12 volts. You're not feeling it. Anyways, so you hook up one and then you hook up the other. See, look at that. That's how that opens. Now, if you want to close it, all you have to do is reverse the polarity. Get it? Like you put this wire here and this wire here. Now the motor is going to run backwards. Pretty straightforward, right guys? Forwards. Backwards. So I mean guys, so far, pretty straightforward, right? Really nothing to it. A baby could do it. Okay, so what we're gonna do, like this is my plan for this. We are gonna have three switches. Each switch is gonna control each part of the roof. So I'm gonna have one switch to open and close this. I'm gonna have another switch to make the roof come out and go back down. And then I'm gonna have a third switch that's gonna control this part. This part's gonna be the most complicated, but if you don't have this part, you still gotta watch the whole video to understand what we're doing. Um, but that's how I'm gonna hook all this up. And the switches you need, guys, are called polarity reversing switches. So the way they work is two wires go in, a positive and a negative, right? And then if you click it one way, the polarity comes out in one direction, like positive, negative, right? But if you click it the other way, then it spins it around, get it? Just like what we did with the wires, it does that inside of the switch. I will get to all that, but I just want you guys to fully understand what's going on here so nobody gets lost as we're going through this whole process. Okay, so yes, all the interior is out of the car because I am doing other stuff too. Uh, but the place that I wanna put these three switches is I have room right here, see on this thing. So these pop out and I'm just gonna have them like one, two, three kind of thing. Um, I will get to all that, but that's where the location of the switches is gonna be in my case. I mean, you can put your switches anywhere you want. You can put them anywhere you want, it doesn't matter. But in my case, I'm putting them there. Okay, let's get uh, started on the wiring of this. Right now, there really is nothing to it. You can do it. Okay guys, so the first thing you're gonna need, like we're gonna use 16 gauge wire to do all this. Uh, the gauge of the wire is like the thickness of it. So the, the smaller the number, the thicker the wire. Like a 10 gauge wire is thicker than a 16 gauge wire. We're just gonna use a 16, it should work. Uh, the best, cheapest way to get wires, guys, I just went to the dollar store, I bought an extension cord, a 16 gauge extension cord, four dollars right and then what you do is you just split it right because there's two cords so i cut the end off right and you just split it like this you get it so i'm gonna have two basically 14 foot wires for four bucks can't beat that okay guys so there we have it two 14 foot wires for four bucks can't go wrong with that Okay, let's get talking about the battery, guys. You guys have to understand everything to be able to do this. So in our case, the battery is in the trunk. So the red one is always positive. The black one is always negative. On the battery, there's also a little plus sign and a little minus sign, right? So if you take um, a light bulb, for example, and you touch one to the negative, one to the positive, boom. See, light bulb lights up. Uh, with the light bulb, you can flip it around, you can run it backwards, and it will also work. It makes no difference to the light bulb. It doesn't care. Okay, but here is the thing that most people don't know. So basically every car ever made, except for a few exceptions of some like 1930s cars or something, uh, you have the negative wire, literally like since the car is metal, see it just runs and it literally hooks up to the body of the car. So 
the whole entire car is negative. Like it has a ground, they call it. So the whole car is negative, and then you have positive wires running to things. So for example, back to our light bulb situation, right? If you hook up the light bulb to the negative and the positive, it lights up. But if you hook up the light bulb to anywhere that's bare metal on the car, like this bolt, for example, bare metal bolt, electricity does not go through paint, right? You touch it there, and then you touch this to the positive, look, it also lights up, see? Because the negative goes into the body of the car and the whole entire car everywhere is negative. So you got negative, positive, get it? So everything's good there. So what you need to watch out for guys is you cannot touch the positive wire that we're gonna hook up to this. You cannot touch it to any metal on the whole car anywhere or it will short out. So like for example, if I took this wire, so it just loops around and I touched it to this, and then I took this side of it and I touched it to that bolt, this wire would right away start to get super hot to the point where the coating on it would actually catch on fire eventually after like a minute or maybe even 30 seconds. So that's the one thing you gotta watch out for guys is um, you cannot touch the positive to anywhere on the body of the whole car. Okay, so now in order to prevent anything from catching on fire in case you make some kind of mistake, what you have to do is, see this is a fuse. This is an inline fuse. Uh, it's a 30 amp fuse. This will be perfect for what we're doing, right? So now, if I hook up these wires like this, or this one wire, let's just say, right? If I do this, right? The electricity is running through the fuse. So now, if I touch this to here, like so, and now I accidentally touch that to that bolt, the wire is not gonna catch on fire. What's gonna end up happening is this fuse will blow and it'll stop the electricity from flowing through, get it? Touch that, fuse blows, prevents your car from catching on fire. So that's the point of fuses, guys. So the first thing we gotta do, guys, is Right on this positive here, we're gonna run a wire all the way to where our switches are gonna be. So we're gonna hook this fuse up directly to here like so. Um, and then we're gonna hook up a wire to here, the green wire we just made, and we're gonna run it to the front of the car. Okay guys, so we got our fuse, so we're gonna take the green wire we made. We're just gonna twist this. You don't need to solder or anything. Um, you just gotta twist it good. So we twist this side on, right, like so. We're gonna put electrical tape on this part so it's all covered up, right? And then on the other side of the fuse, we just got this little connector like this, right? We're gonna put it in here, um, just like that. Give this a squish. And there we go. So that is our positive for our roof. We just made it. We could even put a little bit of electrical tape on there. See, there it is. Okay, let me set this up. Okay, so here it is, right? There is our fuse. There is our wire. That's going to run all the way to over there where our switch is. Um, so the thing is, so for now, we're going to take this fuse out. You want to get the fuse out. So in case you touch that wire anywhere, like the end of it to the body of the car, the fuse doesn't blow and nothing shorts out, right? Okay, so we're going to hook that fuse up. Uh, right here, so you're just gonna go like this, uh, just like that, right? This was on here originally and whatever that's for, and then that, and then there's a bolt, right? So the only thing you gotta do though is, see how corroded this is? That is no good. You gotta grab a piece of sandpaper. All this has to be like bare metal, perfectly clean to get a good solid positive. So I'm gonna clean this, clean this thing on both sides, uh, I'm gonna clean the bolt, put some dielectric grease on it. Dielectric grease. It looks like this. It just prevents corrosion and rust and you put it on electrical connectors. See, there it is. Electric, uh, dielectric grease, great stuff, buy some. Okay, so we got this thing nice and clean, corrosion free. Uh, we got the fuse out. So there's our wire, see? So all we're gonna do now is just up there, right? We're just gonna run it through. Um, there's a little hole there, right? It's gonna come out. 
right there. Maybe we'll run it. Since our interior is out, we might just run it that way. Or you could run it like underneath here. Uh, cover there. I mean, it's up to you how you get that wire to that area. So I'm going to off camera run that wire now, guys, right up to there. Okay, guys, so I ran the wire. And as you can see, there it is at the front of the car. It's a little long. We're going to have to cut it. So this is positive, right? And the whole entire car is negative. Okay, so we're going to go in the trunk right now and put the fuse back in. Make sure this is not touching the body of the car. It can touch a piece of plastic like that, but it can't touch any metal. Okay, the fuse is going back in. Okay, the fuse is in. So this is positive. She is hooked up. So now, in order to make this light bulb light up, right, we don't need to run a second wire all the way to the battery to the negative, right? Makes sense, because the whole car is negative. So all we gotta do is find a good, solid piece of bare metal, like right there, and watch this. As soon as you touch that, boom. See? So we can get our negative for our switch just right off of here, anywhere here. So let me just put this down. Right, so anywhere that we connect into this thing, we can get a negative, see there's bolts there. I hooked up a negative here, see, for something else that I was doing. Because what I did here, guys, is these little windows didn't work on this car. So I basically rewired those the same way. I didn't make an episode about it, but that's what I did to make those windows work. They all work perfect now. That's why you see so many wires here. Anyways, so I'm doing basically the same thing with the roof. Um, and I'm making a video about it. Okay, uh, let's keep going here. Okay, so the next thing we have to do is, so this positive that goes all the way from the battery, this is gonna supply the power to all three motors to uh, open the roof and close it, right? So this is gonna be our positive that supplies power to everything. But the thing is, when your car is turned off, you don't want the roof buttons to work. You only want them to work when your ignition is on, get it? Like now it works, and when you turn it off, you don't want your roof to work. So we somehow need to figure out a way to make this switchable, and I will show you how to do that next. And by switchable, I mean this green wire will only have power when the car is on, and when the car is off, it won't. And how we're gonna do that is by using relays it's super simple, don't be scared. I will explain to you how relays work and how to hook it up. Okay guys, here is a whole bunch of different relays that I got from the junkyard. I just went into like a Dodge Ram, grabbed a whole bunch. Went into a Mercedes, grabbed this one out of a Mercedes. Uh, maybe this one's even out of a Ford. I'm not too sure, it doesn't matter. They all do the exact same thing. You have ones with four prongs, and you have some with five prongs, and you can get the exact same function out of this and this in our case for what we need. So you can use a four prong one, one, two, three, four, or a five prong one, one, two, three, four, five. Very, very simple. Okay, so the way these work, um, I'll show you right now. Okay guys, so all these relays have something in common. Uh, they all have diagrams on them. See, this one has a diagram. The Mercedes one has a diagram. They all have them, every single one, see? Um, and they all basically tell you how they work. Once you understand these diagrams, this will be pretty simple, guys. Okay, I will show you on this four prong one first. Okay, so basically what a relay is, it's a switch. It's basically like a light switch. So these numbers here, guys, see how there's this number, this number, this number, and this number, right? So those numbers are also labeled on these prongs coming out. See, 87, you know, uh, 85, 30, and 86, right? So basically that tells you what these do. Like this is like a diagram of what's going on inside of this box. So this is an electromagnet here. You get what I'm saying? So if you hook up a positive to this and a negative to this, this will turn the magnet on. See, this is the switch. Uh, it will take this little rod here and it will move it over, like the electromagnet will pull this and it will touch it to that. 
and then electricity is going to flow through from number 30 to number 87 get it and then the second you disconnect the electricity here the electromagnet lets go of this little switch you could call it and it'll spring back and then the electricity stops flowing through here get it so what we're gonna do is we're gonna hook up our green wire through this like we're gonna plug it into the 30 and uh, and then we're gonna plug it back into the uh 87 on the other side right so that way when this gets power so like when we turn our key we're gonna turn the power from the key we're gonna hook it up to these two you turn your key on that turns the electromagnet on click this clicks over and now the green wire is going to have electricity going through the second we turn our key off the electromagnet is going to stop getting power and this will click back making electricity not flow through the green wire get it very very simple guys so now if you look at some of these ones with five prongs uh let me grab a five prong one Okay, so here's a five prong one. It's basically the exact same thing, only there's one extra prong on it, right? So the way it would work here is same thing. You can hook up your key ignition here, positive, negative, right? And that switches this. The only difference is here, see electricity goes in from the green wire, like the positive goes in, but now it powers uh, prong. 87 even when the key is off right and then when you turn your key on this switches this to this and now it powers prong number 87 so you could still use this in the same way all you got to do is hook up the green wire to here hook this up to nothing right and then hook this one up to the green wire where it continues to our switch eventually in our motors right uh, it does the exact same thing so you can use a 5-1 or a 4-1, it doesn't matter. I hope I'm explaining that well. See, there it is. I'll just quickly explain it one more time. So if you hook up nothing to 87, which is, I think, this middle one here, right? They're all labeled. Uh, then, yeah, it will just do nothing until you turn your key on. Okay, let's go hook this up. All right, guys, I'm inside the car. So this is the relay I'm going to use. I'm just going to use a 5-prong one because it's got the bigger connectors and that's the connectors that I have right now. So there's the electromagnet, 85 and 86 is the electromagnet, and then 30 is gonna be power in, and 87 is gonna be power out. 87A, we're gonna leave nothing on it, get it? So this will click over when this ignition is turned. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do, guys, is this wire here. I'm gonna cut it to length. Like I want to hide my relay somewhere right here. So I'm going to cut it right about here and I'm going to put a connector like this on it. So let me quickly do that off camera. Okay, see that's what that looks like. So make sure you disconnect that fuse while you're doing that. So now I got this piece of shrink wrap. I'm going to put that on, heat it up with a lighter and that will shrink it. Uh, let me just quickly do that. See, there it is. I mean, this is what you want. Okay, there it is. See, that's how you want that. So that is ready. The only thing we're going to do just for uh, movie purposes and to make things easier is I'm going to grab some red electrical tape and all the positives I'm going to just put red at the end. So let me quickly do that. All right, guys. So here we have it. So we hooked. This is the power going from the battery just to make this super clear for you guys. So we got it hooked into number 30, which is right there. So now... We're gonna hook into number 87, just a wire, which I already prepared, see? Just like this. So that will plug into 87, and then we're gonna have our positive from the battery right here, going through the relay. And when the key is on, this will get power once we're done hooking it up. But okay, let me plug that in right now. Okay, so there it is hooked up, going through the switch, see? And we got it hooked up to the light bulb, just like before, but it's going through the relay. So now, and I did put the fuse back in in the trunk. So now if I touch this to the ground, right, right here, the light's not going to turn on. See, because the relay is turned off, basically. It makes sense. So now what we got to do is we got to hook up a negative uh, to the relay. 
um, to the electromagnet, a negative, like a ground, and a positive that's only there when the key is on. Pretty straightforward, right? Okay, it's been a few minutes. See, I made a little uh, negative ground wire for that relay. Uh, so on the relay, see right here, guys. So we're gonna hook up a, a, a negative, like a ground, to the 86. Right there, 86. So we just have to figure out which one is 86. Let me hook that up right now. Okay, I got it hooked up, see? So now this, like instead of running all the way to the battery to the negative, all we gotta do is hook it up to the body of the car, and that will be the negative going to the relay. So right here is a nice spot. I got a ground here already. I'm just gonna unbolt this, put that underneath, tighten it back up, and then this relay will have a negative going to it. So let me just quickly do that right now. Okay, so I got that bolt out. I'm about to put this negative in, right? Like so. The only thing that's really important though is you gotta grab a little piece of sandpaper and just so it's for sure a good ground. You'd be surprised how often a bad ground can cause problems. So you clean that to bare metal and then you put it on. Okay, let me do that off camera. Okay guys, so we got our negative hooked up. It goes to the relay uh, just the way it should. So now what we need to do is right there, we need to hook up uh, to number 85. We need to hook up a positive that's only on, right, when the key is on. And that will turn the relay on, right, and give this wire power, right? Um, so basically, your radio is a good source for that. Your radio has one of these built into it. There's two positives that go to it. There is a positive that's always there, even if the key is off. And then there's another positive where when you turn the key, it gets a positive and it turns the radio on, right? Because otherwise it would forget your settings. It would forget what time it is. Uh, so that's why there's a constant positive that makes it remember things. And then there's like a relay that turns it on, right? So when you turn it on, see that turns on your stereo, which ours is turning on right now. So. I went, I installed the stereo, so I know which wire it is, so I can help you guys and I can show you which one it is. So it actually runs down here in this spool of wires, and it is the purple wire with a white line, see? That's the wire you have to cut into. So basically it goes up, travels into the deck. So what I did is I just cut it. Um, I already hooked into it for the windows that didn't work. So I'm gonna pull this tape off uh, right now. Okay, let me do that off camera. Okay, the tape is off. So yeah, in your case, you wouldn't have this white wire here. So you would just have a purple wire running up there, right? Which it is, I just had to extend it after I cut it. Um, so basically, we're just gonna hook into this, right? And I mean, you could easily see if this has 12 volts as well. So what you gotta do is watch, if you, touch one part of the light bulb to there and one to there, nothing, right? But if we turn the key on, now the light bulb's gonna light up. So we touch it to that and to there. See, it's got 12 volts, switchable 12 volts. And no guys, you cannot run your roof off this wire. It's too skinny of a wire and you would just start blowing fuses. The only thing you can run off of this wire is a small little relay, which we're running because relays use very little electricity. Like this uses basically no electricity to turn that little switch on. But but the wire to power your roof has to be a thick wire going directly to the battery. Makes sense, guys? Okay, so I made this little thing. So we're gonna basically twist that into this and tape it up really good. Like we're gonna twist this together. So this has a power when I turn the key. So let's quickly do that. All right, so here we have it. See, it's hooked up. There it is. So all we gotta do is plug this into 85, which is right there. Um, all right, let's, let's plug that in. I just need my hand here. Okay, guys, so there it is. There we have it, it's all hooked up. Maybe I'm over explaining this, I don't know. But anyways, here's our original green wire that had a positive in it all the time, right? Now it goes into the relay and then it comes back out of the relay 
There it is. I got it hooked up to the light bulb, right? So we're gonna hook up the other end of the light bulb to a negative, which is just right here, like so. So now, when we turn the key, that light should turn on. There it is, see? Perfect, so now we have a good, solid power wire for, for our three roofs, or our three roof motors, um, that is switchable by the ignition. So this gets a positive, boom, when I turn the key. Okay guys, I'm gonna say stage one complete. Uh, let's get hooking up of the switches and the motors now. Oh yeah, one more thing before we move on. So this relay is just gonna like sit here, like, like that, you know, inside once I put all this back together. But you're gonna have to get electrical tape and just wrap it around. You can't have any exposed connectors like that because this thing could, for example, slide and ground out on like this metal thing, get it? So it's gotta be wrapped up. Um, that's all, see? The one for the windows, I did the same thing. So you guys just wrapped it like that and it just sits there like that. No big deal, guys. Okay, we're moving on. All right, guys. Well, our next move is to close the roof. So let's do that. So I got one set of wires hooked up right here, just like before. And then I got another set hooked up to that motor. See, and I just got them running out the trunk because the trunk has to be closed in order for that to open, right? Um, so we'll just go like this. We'll bring these up and you get the drill. Hook it up to our little 12 volt battery. And let's open her up. And guys, this 12 volt battery, like I said earlier, same thing as just a regular car battery. Wrong direction. Okay, and this next part's important guys. So as you can see, it goes all the way up and then it stops. And then when it goes all the way down, watch. It stops on its own, right? See, it goes down. See, it stops, then you disconnect the battery, and then on the way up. So if you're using a switch, you can basically hold the switch right till it stops. See, it stops, you let go of the switch. So this one will be easy. The next one does the same thing. Okay, let's do the next roof. And guys, that video that I mentioned at the beginning of this video, that one covers like all the mechanical parts of the roof. This is the electrical part. So I do highly recommend that you watch that video as well to fully understand this. Okay, so we got it up. So now what we gotta do is we're gonna have to lower this part, right? And then a tad lower this, and then we'll worry about the front. But like I told you guys, uh, also this part of the roof, so it went up, and it stopped on its own. Like then this thing came up and then it stopped. So you'll be able just to hook up your switch directly to this and it does the exact same thing on the way down. It'll go close and it'll go and it'll just stop without like breaking anything, right? So these two are easy. That part, if you have an electric one, this part's a little bit more complicated, guys. Okay, so let me just lower this and close the back. So now in order to close this part, you just touch it for like half a second. See guys, so now you just reverse the polarity again and you would just touch the button for like half a second like this. See in the opposite direction. Okay guys, so here we have it. Um, so I originally was gonna work on this part next, on this motor to hook it up and get it working, but I decided not to do that guys. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna work on the motor that controls this and the motor that controls this. So that way for the people that don't have the fully automatic roof, I'm gonna make a separate video on just that part guys, just this part. And it's gonna be a private video guys. So the only way you're gonna be able to get to the video on the front opening and closing part of this roof 
is by clicking in the description on the link or at the end of this video, there'll be a little link as well. But this is different, guys. You can't hook this up the same way we're about to hook up these other two. Let me just quickly show you why and then we're moving on. So basically with the other two motors for that part of the roof back there, um, you can just hold a button and it can go up all the way and it'll just stop on its own, right? When it goes up and when it goes down, um, you know, you can hear it stop and you just let go of the button. But the problem with this front part is, if you hold the button down and this motor just keeps spinning and spinning, it's, it's going to twist these rods here. You get what I'm saying? So there is little micro switches. There is a little micro switch here and there's a little micro switch on the other side. Um, somewhere there. I'll show you guys in the other video. And what we have to do is we're going to have to hook up relays. So that way when this thing slides over, the second it hits the micro switch, it's going to cut this motor out so it doesn't twist anything. And then when you press the button in the other direction, and then this goes the other way, it's going to hit the micro switch and cut the motor out so it doesn't twist these rods here. They're not very strong as far as that. So this part is going to be a little bit more complicated, guys. So like I said, there will be a separate video on just this, almost like a continuation of what we're doing. Okay, let's get into hooking up of the other two motors right now. It's very, very simple, guys. You can do it. Okay, guys, so we got the roof in this type of position for now, just so we can have the trunk opened. So I got two more extension cords, guys. One and another one. So what we're gonna do now, guys, pretty straightforward. So the one motor right here, we're gonna hook up one extension cord, one there, one there, run it to the front. We're gonna hook up another extension cord, one there, one there, and we're gonna run them both wherever, all the way to the front, right to that spot where our switches are gonna be. So I'm just quickly gonna do that off camera. Pretty straightforward, right? Nothing to it. And while I'm doing that, all these exposed wires everywhere that I cut, we're gonna put electrical tape on all the ones that I cut that we don't need and uh, clean this up a little bit. So I'm gonna do that off camera. Okay guys, so here it is. See how nice and clean everything is? I cleaned everything up. I ran the wires through just like I said I would. Uh, those two extension cords I had were a little bit too short. So I extended them with a white one. So there it is. We have the back motor and the motor for this roof connected. So now having these wires here is basically the equivalent of, you know, being at the back and touching these to the motor. So if I go and grab these two wires and touch them to this battery, right? The back will start to open, right? But don't forget to close your trunk first. Okay. Right, and now if we grab the other set of wires, right here, right, and hook them up to the battery, that will control this roof. Pretty straightforward, right? But the thing is now, we can actually completely get rid of this battery because we have basically our motors up here. So remember our original positive wire that we ran from the battery? Well, here it is. So we got a positive once we turn the key on. So we can turn the key on just like that. And now uh, this is for the back motor. If you touch one of them to this, right? And one of them to the ground, which is the whole car. As you can see, the roof closes. Okay, so all we gotta do now is instead of hooking up wires, right? To this and that, we gotta hook up a polarity reversing switch to this wire and to the negative and then hook it into that. That's what this next portion of this video is going to be about reverse polarity switches and how to hook them up okay guys so here we have a polarity reversing switch i got a whole bunch of these from the junkyard from an old mercedes um you can get these on ebay you can get them on uh, amazon i mean not mercedes ones like actual 
random ones I will show you still. Um, the difference between a polarity reversing switch and like newer switches like this originally had for the windows, let's say, is these wires are very skinny. This is almost like a micro switch where this controls relays, get it? Um, but a polarity reversing switch, so on like older vehicles, like 1985 and down, this is how it was done. So the way these work, two wires go in. Okay, so let me just quickly explain something. So yes, this has six wires on it. These two wires are just for the light to make this light up. So we're not using these at all. This is a polarity switch, a four wire polarity switch. There is also six wire polarity switches. They work the exact same way. I will cover both in this video. So ours happens to be a, a four wire one, right? So I figured out which wires go in. So you hook up, you know, one to the positive, one to the negative, just like this. Okay, so we got power going into the switch, positive and a negative. It actually doesn't matter which way you hook these up. Um, okay, so now we're gonna hook up a light bulb to it just to show you. So one goes to one wire, right? One goes to the other wire, right? So now you got nothing. Like pretend the light bulb is the motor to open the roof and close it, right? So if you press it in one direction, boom, the motor's getting power, right? If you press it in the other direction, Boom, the motor's getting power, but now it's running backwards, right? Pretty simple. Let me just show you one other quick test with a voltmeter. So you set your voltmeter to uh, 20 volts direct current, right? DC. Um, and you hook it up. Okay, so now when I press the button, watch, it's going to go up to 12 volts. Boom, so you got 12 volts, right? No plus sign, and then if I press the button the other way, see, you got negative 12 volts, because it reversed it. Like this thing will tell you if something's hooked up backwards, see? So backwards, forwards, pretty straightforward. So you can buy yourself a four wire rever uh, polarity reversing switch, or you can buy yourself a six wire polarity reversing switch, which I will show you on eBay right now really quick. Okay guys, so I just went on eBay and I typed in 12 volt polarity reversing switch. Take a look at this first one here. So this is just a four wire polarity reversing switch. Check out some of the pictures of it. See, there you go. Two wires in, two wires out. Just like what I showed you from the Mercedes only uh, this is just a universal one. No problems whatsoever, guys. Uh, you could totally use this. Okay, let's see what else they got. Okay, so the next one down the list here. Uh, see, this is a 12-volt polarity reversing switch. But this one, this is a six-prong polarity reversing switch. See? it it use, You use it the exact same way. There's really no difference. There'll be a diagram of how to hook it up. So you can just easily buy this one as well. They both work exactly the same, guys. I'm quickly gonna show you how to hook a six wire one up right now. Okay, guys, here's a diagram of a six prong polarity reversing switch, right? So you got your battery, pretty straightforward. Here's your motor, right? Um, so the power goes into the switch, it goes in there, right? This means the wire is jumping over it. It doesn't connect to there. Same with here, it doesn't connect. Those connect right here, right? So you got, when you switch, when you click your switch one way, it's gonna get electricity flowing into the motor in one direction. And if you click it the other way, this is gonna let electricity out and it's gonna reverse it. So one's gonna go like this into the motor and the other one is gonna go like that into the motor, reversing it. It's the exact same thing. This thing inside of a four wire reverse polarity switch, it's the same. It basically, that setup is just inside of this. That's all. So only four wires come out. Pretty straightforward. Okay, let's go hook it up. Okay, guys. So now to hook up the switch. So you need a positive and a negative going into it. So there they are. Positive, negative. It doesn't matter which way you hook it up. You can hook it up backwards. It makes no difference. So... Uh, we're gonna get our positive obviously like we'll hook up 
this one to there. That will be your positive, right? And our negative, so I made this kind of thing again. See, I made two already, two negatives for both the switches, um, for both the motors, right? So I'm just gonna attach that right there to have two more negatives. Okay, let me quickly do that off camera. Okay, so here we have our negatives. I just realized I'm actually gonna need one more because I'm gonna need one for this negative, right? But we'll worry about that later in the other video, the private video where I do that. So, okay, to our switch, we hook up a negative and this positive that goes directly from the battery through the ignition switch through the relay, right? So, on this particular switch, like this is out of a Mercedes, I actually took it apart to figure out, you know, which wires it is. So these two go in, those two go out. I mean, if you buy these on eBay or Amazon, they'll have instructions, right? Anyways, so I'm gonna hook up this one to the positive, twist it together, and the other one to the negative. I'm gonna do that right now. And then to these two remaining wires, I'm gonna hook up the back motor, one to one, one to the other one. Okay, I'm just gonna do it off camera right now. Okay guys, the ignition is turned on. Our switch is connected just the way I said I was gonna connect it. Um, the reason I don't have the, the tape on yet is because I'm gonna try it out. If this switch is backwards, all you gotta do is the two wires that go to the motor, you just disconnect them and just reverse this and then it'll work forwards. All right, let's see if she'll go down. Oh, look at that. Okay, now back up. That totally works. Back down. You're the computer now, get it? So like you have to decide what to press when. So basically you let it go up and then when you hear it stop, you let go of the button. When you go down, same thing. Done, okay. I'm gonna open this. That's a lot easier than hooking a battery up. And let's hook up the other one. Okay, I mean, I'm sure you guys are getting this now. So here's our second switch. So this one, we're gonna hook it up the same way. So we're gonna take our negative here, right? Um, so we're gonna hook up this negative to this one on the switch, right? And then the positive that's gonna be going into the switch, we're getting it from the same place that the other switch is getting its positive from. So we're just gonna twist it onto here, get it? So the positive from the battery coming out, it's gonna feed the one motor and the other motor, get it? We're gonna twist that together there, hook that up to the ground, and then the two wires coming off of it, those are gonna hook up to our other motor. Uh, pretty straightforward, guys. You're getting it. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna hook that up and let's try it out, guys. Okay, guys. You gotta check it out, it works awesome. Um, let me show you. So here are my two buttons that control the two motors. That kind of looks like the back of the car. That kind of looks like the front of the car. So this is for the, for the back part opening and this is for the roof opening. Makes sense to me. I mean, you're the computer now, so you have to press these in the right sequence, right? Like for example, Right now the roof is completely open, right? So the first thing you gotta do is open this thing. You don't wanna start pulling out your roof when this is closed, right? Like, I mean, there's no computer to tell it. You're in charge of your switches. It's like when you're driving a standard car. You're not gonna throw it in reverse when you're on the highway, right? So, I mean, you gotta be careful with your own car. Okay, let's open the back. So, I mean, pretty straightforward. We press this. Oh, nothing's happening. That's right, because our ignition's not on. Let's turn it on. All right, let's open the back. See, there it goes, right to the end. We let go of the button. Now we're gonna press up on this one to make the roof start coming out. Pretty straightforward. Okay, I'm pressing it now. Look at that. Very nice. Real time, boys and girls. So it goes up. See the back lifts. Okay, I let go of the button, let me show you. 
See the roof came out, it lifted this thing up for that to go under. So that's controlled by the same motor as the roof coming out. So now we're gonna go in the car and we're gonna close the back piece, nothing to it, just like this. There we go. And now all we gotta do is, let me just show you, is we gotta lower this. And the way to do that is the, the, the button for this roof, you just have to click it backwards. So like to close for like a half a second and this just closes. So yeah, this one here, just a half a second. Okay, pressing it now. You can like see when it gets in the right place. There we go. Um, so all you would do now is, you know, grab your handle and pull this down. In our case, we're gonna have a third button. So make sure you subscribe and check out that video. Uh, let me show you the whole process right now. So thanks for watching Problem Solver Garage, guys. Make sure you tune in next time for the awesome episode of life. Whoa, look at this, styling. No more doing it by hand. Thanks for watching. Till next time, everybody. I'm gonna watch all the roof videos by this guy.